When I say MJ, what comes to mind? Maybe Michael Jackson or maybe Mid Journey? Yes, this magical tool lets us marketers create beautiful images from prompts. But what prompts and how do you even describe what you want an image to look like? Thankfully, Tim is here to help. He's a navigator into the fusion of artistry and AI tools and the host of a fabulous YouTube channel called Theoretically Media. In the next few minutes, he will share his best tips for how you, marketer, can prompt Midjourney to get images that are amazing and on brand. Take it away, Tim. Thanks so much for that lovely introduction and thank you for joining me today for this tutorial on getting started with Midjourney. I'm really excited to take you on this tour. There are, of course, a number of AI image generators on the market today, but in my opinion, Midjourney has always held an edge over its competition for its amazing aesthetics and imaginative outputs. No one image generator, of course, is better than the other one, but Midjourney is a pretty incredible tool, not just as a tool for creating captivating images, but also as an engine for iterating on ideas. Personally, I can get lost for hours just by changing one keyword in a prompt and being inspired to go down an entirely different artistic path. That said, Midjourney has evolved quite a bit and it does continue to do so. So I know that hopping in can sometimes be a little overwhelming. So today we're going to go over everything you need to know to at least get started and start exploring. Okay, let's dive in. Just as a note for today's video, we will be focusing on the Midjourney website. Uh, as of today's recording, you'll note that it still says Midjourney Alpha up in this corner, so it hasn't been released completely wide to everyone yet. That said, its release is eminent, so when you watch this, it should be available to all users. The website itself is very nice. You've kind of got this endless scroll of the community feed. It's a great way to stay inspired. Uh, additionally, you have a toggle switch down here for light mode and dark mode. As I famously say, only psychopaths use light mode, so let's just switch that to dark. Anyhow, uh, up here at the top, we have our Imagine Bar. This is where we'll be issuing in our prompts to Midjourney. Now, something that I always like to say is that there are no hard and fast rules when it comes to prompting. There is no right or wrong way to prompt. That said, there are a number of strategies and practices that we can take to guide our results. Uh, for example, by taking the most basic prompt of all time, toast. I mean, it's toast. How can you mess that up? I guess you can burn it. But anyhow, let's generate this and see what Midjourney gives us. And in just a few moments, Midjourney has given us four renditions of toast. We have this one, which is actually lightly burned around the sides. I don't know. Were you listening in again, Midjourney? Two slices of what I would consider model worthy toast here. A uh, very lovely image, nice depth of field back here. And right down to like some breadcrumbs on the plate. So uh, well played, Midjourney. And we round out with two more images of toast. Now, let's see what happens when we start adding some intention into our prompting. For example, changing the prompt out to a piece of toast on an antique plate sitting on the rustic kitchen table of a farmhouse kitchen, golden morning light streaming in from a window, stunning commercial photography. The results end up coming out looking pretty nice. At least we're starting to move into the ballpark of what we're looking for. Now again, to reiterate, there is no such thing as a perfect prompt. There is no such thing as a perfect prompt formula. In the old days, we would have prompts like this, where we were just sort of spamming out keywords, hoping that the bot would pick up on enough of them to get something that we were looking for. Thankfully, as of version 6, Midjourney has a greatly improved prompt coherence, meaning it understands the context of what you're trying to prompt and also allows for longer prompts. As an important note, just because you can import like long paragraphs into Midjourney does not necessarily mean that's the best practice, as Midjourney is still, it's not ChatGPT, it's not an LLM. So taking a structured approach to your prompt is often the best way to go. So here's a breakdown of how I like to organize a prompt in version six. Uh, it begins with the subject and whatever action they are taking, then followed by the setting and the overall mood. It has been noted that since V6, Midjourney has been paying particular attention to emotional keywords. We then move on to the artistic medium that we're looking for, followed by the shot type that we're looking for, like a wide angle, a long shot, or a close up. We can then round out with some style keywords to round the whole thing out and push it into a certain stylistic direction. As an FYI, you can skip any one of these categories if you want as well and kind of let, just let Midjourney decide. Sometimes you end up with some really, really interesting results when you don't tell it what medium or shot that you're looking for. So as an example, taking the whole of that prompt structure and issuing the command, a young couple in love holding hands as they walk through a city park, autumn day, what, I'm, yeah, I'm a big softy. I mean, what can I say? Uh, stunning natural light, candid photography, long shot, 
DSLR documentary photo, which yields us these results, which aren't bad. They're just not really flooring me. A lot of that has to do with the fact that we did not give Midjourney enough details. Left to its own devices, Midjourney will often give you the character with back to camera unless you prompt otherwise. All we have to do to play with this prompt is come down to the use button down here and hit that and it'll repopulate at the top. If we want to push our luck with the same prompt, we can just hit the rerun button down here. But in this case, I'm pretty sure it would just yield us more or less the same results. So swapping our prompt around a little bit gave us these images, which definitely have a lot more character. The prompt here became a young couple in love. The woman is on the right and smiling. The man is on the left and grinning as they walk through a city park, autumn day, stunning natural light, candid photograph, nostalgic photo. Now, I did remove the keyword of long shot to let Midjourney decide how it wanted to compose the image, but it did give us a pretty decent variety of shots. You know, most of them are sort of obviously in that medium shot range, but in the third image here, we do have a sharp focus on our girl on the right, uh, while our guy on the left is kind of, you know, blurred out in depth of field. Uh, yeah, it's nice. We do have an option to add even more variety to these shots. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So here's a list of shots and angles that you can try out for for your props in mid journey. Two quick things to note. For one, the more common shots like long shot, medium shot, and close up are usually pretty good with working. While some of the other ones like tilt shift soft focus or crab shot, yeah, you may be rolling the dice a little bit there, but you might end up with something very cool. Second, although most of these shots are sort of more in the photographic or cinematic vocabulary, uh, they do work on other mediums as well. For example, generating up this image, an old man wearing a yellow coat stands in front of a tree, looking up at it, green grass on the hillside, blooming trees with white flowers, blue sky and clear weather, children's book illustration style, simple details. Here's an alternate from that same prop. The whole thing just kind of reminds me of a book that we all read when we were kids, but now when we read it as adults, we, we, we totally understand what the book was really about. Anyhow, by simply adding in the prompt bird's eye view, we end up with an image like this, which may not be the fullest, most extreme bird's eye view, but you know, we definitely see that mid journey understands the concept. Beyond prompting, we have a number of other options to control our output in mid journey, namely, via this button here on the right hand side of the prompting bar. By default, Midjourney will be set to an aspect ratio of one by one or, you know, a perfect square. We can change our aspect ratios to most of the common ones uh, simply by sliding left. And as you can see, that's kind of becoming more uh, in the portrait mobile format. And then if we head to the right, you're kind of getting more square to widescreen cinematic formats. For example, here is the very simple prompt of cinematic still inception at 1-1, whereas here is that same prompt only with the aspect ratio of 2-1, which more in that widescreen format. Now, what if you want an aspect ratio that isn't listed there? Well, that's actually pretty simple. All you have to do is at the end of your prompt, issue the command dash dash AR space followed by a number, a colon bracket, and then a number. For example, here is that same prompt issued with the very bizarre aspect ratio of 9-1, or going the other direction with dash dash AR 2-9 uh, yields us kind of more of this bookmark format. So aspect ratios are definitely something that I think you will want to experiment with, namely because I think that when you use them in conjunction with called out shots, you can end up with some pretty fascinating compositions. Moving on to our next section on aesthetics, uh, I generated this image up as kind of a baseline. This is a gumshoe detective, rough but handsome. Midjourney made some pretty interesting choices in terms of that description. I mean, number two, sure, uh, he's rough. He's handsome to somebody. Anyhow, uh, it's sitting in his cluttered office, holding a cup of coffee, case folders all over his desk, light streaming in through closed blinds, cinematic, uh, still film grain. So your stylization slider is going to affect, you know, your overall stylization. So this is something that defaults at around 100. If we start cranking it up to, let's just say like 400, you're going to get some different results. Stylized, yes, but when we push it too far, things can get too stylized. So cranking the stylized up to 400 definitely gives us much more stylized images, though we do see some things start breaking down, like the coffee cup here has become like a, just a little teacup. We also got this image, which I actually don't think is bad, minus, again, the coffee cup looks a little bit uh, on the odd side. We'll be looking at a way at how to fix that in just a little bit. But we also ended up with this guy who might just be investigating the murder he committed. Oddly, at a stylize of 800, we ended up with some very nice images, uh, including this one, 
who, uh, yes, he definitely fits rough but handsome. Uh, I don't necessarily know if he's the good guy in the movie, but it's a really, really nice image. There was also a result like this, which definitely looks much more in line. We also got this one, which I really like in terms of the angle and the style and the composition. Uh, he is rocking not only one cup of coffee, but he's got, you know, a spare one sitting on his knee ready to go. This guy is caffeinated. Weirdness is a parameter that introduces quirky and offbeat qualities to your generated images. Uh, this one can be, uh, well, it can be weird. My recommendation is to use weird on kind of more abstract or artistic images. Uh, for example, cranking it up to 1500, but going back to our cinematic still inception prompt results in images like this, which, you know, look pretty cool. But even taking it down to a level like 20 for our gumshoe detective, it results in, yeah, some pretty weird images. Um, so, yeah, use weird with caution. Finally, variety changes the overall similarity of the images in your initial four grid image. Uh, to be honest, I usually keep that down pretty low. So when you have generated an image that you like, uh, in this case, this was an astronaut standing in a busy coffee shop holding a cup of coffee. He is surrounded by customers who ignore him. Uh, it's a wide angle photograph, modern commercial. Uh, I like this one. So if we click on this, we actually have a number of other options that we can play with as well. Uh, the very button essentially takes your same prompt and just creates iterations on it. We can either do that subtly or strongly. So let's roll a subtle which results in these four images very much in line with our initial generation. Uh, you can see there are differences. Again, there are subtle differences. There are people in the background here. There are not people here. His pose changes ever so slightly through each of the four images. Going back and running that as a variation strong, however, results in images like this, where in you know image number one, he's now double fisting his coffee. There's a lot of coffee in this video. Or in image number three, where his body orientation has changed completely. The next section on remix is a lot of fun. I'm actually switching images here uh, to essentially the same prompt. I just swapped it out to hyper colorful concept art as the overall style. For, so for this remix, I actually have the opportunity to, let's just change out the stylization to 700 and see what happens. And as you can see, we end up with the same image, but now with a higher level of stylization. Through remixing and variations, you can end up with a lot of different iterations on the same idea. Rounding out with the last section, which is fairly self-explanatory, uh, the pan with the arrow directions basically says what it does. Uh, it will pan your image in that direction. So let's uh, pan to the right, which then gives us four different choices to choose from in terms of variations on panning to the right. We can also zoom our image out 1.5 or two times. Let's try 1.5. And sure enough, we now have a zoomed out slightly wider image. What's a lot of fun is just from here, you can continue on panning and zooming and just kind of create a really, really wild and huge canvas. Finally, to introduce one of the most powerful tools in this section, we're going to return to where it all began, toast. So just to combine a few things here, we have this glorious piece of toast, uh, which we will now take and zoom out a little bit, resulting in this image. Now, since coffee has also been a recurring theme in this video, uh, I'm going to swap out this teapot here and turn it into a pot of coffee. Uh, to do that, you want to come down into the very region. That will open up another window. And all we have to do is just sort of drag and highlight this area and we can change our prompt out to a cup of coffee. This is a process called in-painting. Uh, we hit the submit button, and sure enough, we have now swapped out our teapot for some black gold. An important thing to note is that very region actually has a contextual understanding of the overall image. You'll note that we did not end up with a cup of coffee in like a styrofoam cup or like a cheap thermos, but instead ended up with a cup that kind of matches the rest of the dishware set. Also, all of the lighting remains intact, so it doesn't look like it's been pasted in there. So that's what we'll cover here today. And believe me, that is just scratching the surface. There are still like a hundred tips and tricks, even within what we just learned here. Plus, there are even more features that I would love to introduce to you. If you'd like to stay current on what's happening with Midjourney, I do invite you to head over to my channel, Theoretically Media. You have a whole playlist of previous Midjourney tutorials, and I always cover the latest features as they launch. Thank you so much to SEM Rush for hosting me here today, and thank you very much for watching. That was awesome. For more expert marketing tips, check out the resources on this page. See you in the next video.